SMT Nation, let me have a moment of your time so I could tell you a little bit about our partner, Southern New Hampshire University, otherwise known as SNHU. SNHU is a great opportunity for a lot of you out there to possibly embark on a new career training. It's a school that can give you world-class student support so you never feel left out. They've got great opportunities and programs for you to earn job projection for growth, flexible term starts 24-7 online accessibility. They also have a very extensive portfolio of degree programs with some of the lowest tuition rates across the country. And quite often you can transfer up to 90 credits toward any undergraduate degree that they offer. Different courses might include network security, application security, incident response, and investigation through their online BS and cybersecurity, one that I feel is quite compelling for a lot of you out there. So using our partner link down here in the description, as well as here on the screen, you guys can see it, snhu.edu forward slash need. You can check out their programs, get more information, register for courses, and sign up for your future. Consider SNHU for your future coursework needs and getting a career in something very rewarding. Check them out. Link is in the description. SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, we are testing the T-Mobile network, and we're doing it with one single band, one single channel, and that is going to be N71. And we're going to do it in the standalone version of that network connection. Uh, we're just going to do N71 by itself. They typically have, I think, 15 megahertz of N71 here. We've eliminated all the other bands. There's no LTE. There's no N25. There's no N41. We've gotten those out of the equation. We're just simply going low band as we test here in the lower level of the SMT HQ. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the band configuration. And we can kind of go back. It says apply done. We should be able to go back and see that it has been activated there. So it says NR5G71 uh, standalone. All right, so that's all. All right, let's go ahead and do a few speed tests uh, here. So N41 didn't work down here in the lower level. Uh, the N25 did. Uh, you'll see the top three speed tests there. Those are the performances from the previous video. Uh, this is where, in the case of the lower level, this is where low band shines, right? The, the connections for N25 were high jitter, high latency, erratic, unstable, and we didn't even have like usable uplink. We're hoping we get some of that here with the N71. Tower sites less than a mile away. Uh, we're on Nokia radio gear. And uh, of course, low band doesn't have massive MIMO or anything like that. So we're going to run a few tests and, and we'll kind of take a look at the performance. Uh, once those tests are done, I'll go ahead and fast forward for you guys. All right, folks, so we got the results in. All right, they are the top three speed tests. We've got download range from 34 megabits upwards of 42 megabits. And then for uplink, we saw just a shade above two megabits. And then we saw just a shade under seven megabits. That would be, in my opinion, the most usable connection. Combination of downlink throughput and uplink throughput. If we compare this to the N25, you'll see we have much more downlink, but we have much less uplink. And there are some things that you got to do that are going to require some uplink. A video call, for example, it actually might work on N71. Uh, maybe uploading a small file, right? Up uploading a, a, a small short video or something. That could potentially happen with this connection. It would take a while, but it, it might work. Uh, the previous connection, the N25, would not have worked. I don't think that would have worked. I, I, I think it would have timed out or something. Um, downlink is perfectly good and adequate. I think you can continue to play, you know, high-quality video and stuff like that. But, yeah, the, the connection was, was still jittery. The connection was, you know, high latency. I saw the loaded latencies were spiking. Not an ideal connection. Uh, you could see the trouble that lower levels have. For cellular networks it's just hard to get a good signal in a lower level um but yeah it's kind of cool that we could do this with the t-mobile network you can lock in standalone 5g right where you can isolate channels and kind of see the performance uh and in this case i think n71 would be helping now if i was to enable the carrier aggregation combine the n71 the n41 you know you might get a pretty nice performer you might see over 100 megabits down you might see 
you know, almost 10 megabits per second up, maybe, right? Five to 10, probably to be expected. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the video. I kind of wanted to show that, right? We're less than a mile away from the tower. Uh, it's a low band frequency. Distance should be less of an issue. Uh, work within, you know, these types of tight situations, indoor penetration, those propagation properties, kind of making it usable in a, in a way, right? Not not the greatest, but still usable in my opinion. Anyway, share your experiences with me with N71. What has it done for you? How reliable has it been? How helpful has it been to you? Or has N25 been better? Or maybe N41, right? Those are the major 5G NR bands for T-Mobile. In this case, it was the best performer down here in the lower level, clearly. Uh, but what's your experiences like? Share them with me. Sound off in the comment section below. Y'all, the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. And the ways to support our channel are down in the description. Big salute to the SMT Nation. We out this piece.